In this part of the lesson, we'll learn how to use a do until loop, which is a nice way to avoid having to write an explicit logical test to work out when to exit from a do loop structure. Let's start by opening up the file that I've downloaded and extracted, and then we can choose to enable content. It's the same example we looked at in the previous part of the lesson, eight worksheets, each with six matches from the FIFA 2018 World Cup. We've already got some code in here that we wrote together in the previous part of the lesson, so if we switch into the Visual Basic Editor, we've essentially got the entire procedure that we wrote together as part of that lesson. What we're going to do first is look at how we're exiting from the inner nested do loop. The very last statement within this loop is an if statement, which checks if a condition has been met, then exit do. Now, when you're exiting a do loop from either the very first or the very last instruction within the loop, you can choose to incorporate this condition within either the do statement or the loop statement. Let's begin by removing the if statement altogether. So let's get rid of if active cell value equals an empty string, then exit do. We can now choose to build the condition into either the do or the loop statement. Let's start by doing it in the do statement. So in the do statement, I'm going to add the phrase until and then write the logical test active cell dot value equals an empty string. So now we've incorporated our logical test as part of the do loop structure rather than the do statement just beginning or indicating the point at which the instructions will begin repeating. Each time we reach the do statement, it evaluates this logical test to determine whether it should do these instructions or not. The end result for the end user is identical. They would see no difference at all. Uh, the, the nice thing about it is it provides you with a neat shortcut, I suppose, more than anything else. You could also choose to place the until statement at the loop line. So it's an either or. Don't place it on both do and loop, but you can place the until part and the condition on the loop line instead. So if I move that down here by clicking and dragging it. This will now do this set of instructions as usual. And then when it reaches the loop line, it will check if the active cell value is an empty string, then it won't loop back up to the top. So it will only continue looping until this condition has been met. Now, at this point, the only difference between placing the until statement on the do line or the until line is that if I place the until statement after the keyword do and get rid of just tidy up after myself there, sorry. This means that if I were to select a blank cell in the first place, if I selected cell A3 and A3 was empty, then my do statement would never start looping. So this set of instructions would never be carried out. If the until statement was part of the loop line instead, it wouldn't matter if A3 was empty. Even if A3 was empty, my do statement here indicates to perform this set of instructions once at least, and then check if I'm in a blank cell. It's important to note that this explicit way of testing if you want to exit from a do statement is still useful and necessary in some cases. Whenever you want to exit from a do statement from somewhere in the middle of the do loop structure, then you need to do things this way. I couldn't really, the way I've structured this code, I couldn't incorporate my uh, active sheet dot next is nothing logical test in either the do or the loop statement here. If I said do until active sheet dot next is nothing, I would reach the group H sheet and then immediately exit from the do before I generated the set of scores for that sheet. Alternatively, if I placed it in the loop until I could say loop until active sheet dot next is nothing, then the problem with that is that once I'd reached sheet H or group H, it would generate a set of random scores and then attempt to move to the next sheet before I'd had a chance to determine whether that existed or not. So this is still a valid way of testing whether you want to exit from a do and is the right answer, right solution in this particular case. We should just check that this code still works now that we've made that modification to it. So if I can rearrange my screen to see both Excel and the VP editor, I can select the predict scores procedure and then just run it and make sure that we end up on group H without generating any runtime errors. And we have a set of scores generated for each of the other sheets. So at this point, you can either continue with the extra practice session at the end of this part of the lesson, or you can move on to the next part of this lesson, which covers how to use something called a do while loop.